Terrorism in Europe, Boko Haram, and Free Community College. I'm John Romero, and this is The Square Circle. Welcome to the Square Circle. I'm your host, John Romero. Join us today are Nick Brana of socioevolve.com, Gregory Clay of gdclay.com, and conservative writer and editor Brian McNichol. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. This week, authorities across Europe carried out raids against suspected terrorists. Forces in Belgium, Germany, and France swept suspe suspected hideouts of Islamic militants. This latest episode comes a week after the attack on French satire magazine Charlie Hebdo, and it was it has Western Europe on edge. Mr. McNichol, has the threat of Islamic terrorism in Europe come to a head? It may have. The, the way to tell will be, is there consistent over months and months reestablishing law enforcement in those, there's some communities there, as I understand it, that are basically have created their own sovereignty. They're police themselves, uh, they're Muslim communities within France. No go where, zones. No go zones, right. Yes. And so uh, you're you're ceding sovereignty to people. You're ceding courts. You're ceding justice. You're ceding, you know, takings of property to people in the world's oldest democracy. So if they're going to, you know, what the what will tell the tale on this is: do the police go in and establish civilian authority, French civilian sovereign authority in those communities again? But otherwise, you know, this is not going to get less bad. It's going to keep getting worse. Gregory. Well, first of all, Western Europe has put itself in a major conundrum. It goes back to what McNichol was saying earlier. Um, these many states, a state within a state, you know, also known as no-go zones, NGZs. Um, whoever thought of that is crazy. You know, and, but it's all over Western Europe. Not only France and Belgium and Germany and, and on and on and on. I mean, I, that is ludicrous. I mean, it's, it's, it's a definition of, of insanity, you know, doing something over and over again and expecting a different result. No. I mean, I, I, I don't get it. Um, you know, and some of these uh, no-go zones essentially allow Muslim people to basically have, you're bringing the Middle East to Europe, you know, um, uh, your own court system, uh, um, um, housing, uh, some of these areas are under Sharia law, you know, which is which is uh, it's beyond crazy, and um, and now Western Europe I think is um, reaping the negatives of having those no-go zones. I mean, to me, the first thing Western Europe has to do is to eradicate no-go zones. I take somewhat of a different approach. Um, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> So I knew it. I think the, the, the question that's missing here, the big elephant in the room in the entire war on terror, frankly, is why is this extremism occurring? Why is it increasing? And the greatest tragedy, I think, is that uh, Western governments are now going to try to exploit this and parlay it into an attack on Syria, uh, into regime change and the deployment of ground forces into Syria. And that means that we really haven't learned anything in these past 14 years of war on terror because it's precisely the destabilization of Iraq, the destruction of the Ba'athist Party, the dissolving of the National Guard in Iraq that created this environment for ISIS to exist. It's the reason that ISIS exists in the way that, that anything that resembles like it does today. We did it in Libya, we did it in Afghanistan, uh, we're doing it in Sudan and Somalia with drones. You know, so these things are demonstrated to increase extremism against us. These are self-generating wars in the way that our own actions are actually exacerbating this action against us. If we actually want to take the lessons of this, then we need, it's going to take some adequate policy responses of us. We're going to have to learn from what we've done incorrectly in the past, I believe. Bottom line, you're saying it's the United States' fault. But I'm saying uh, the U.S. actions is exacerbating. I, I tell you what, I think we there, there's a case to be made. I think 
Uh, I totally agree that one of the worst stakes, mistakes we made was destroying the Iraqi army. After we beat them, there's trained right. military professionals who are ready to bring stability to the country. It's a whole different story if not for yeah. that one bonehead move. Well, where, and where are they now? That was military expertise. Look at the yeah. officer corps of ISIS. Yeah. That's where the officer corps of ISIS is coming it's from, the National Guard. Uh, yeah, yes, but okay, look, in France, in Paris, cartoons, okay, you don't have to go out and kill somebody because of a cartoon. Certainly not. Nobody's going to defend that. Okay. But that's where we are. You know? okay. That's where so we are. I mean, come on, man. But you have to ask uh -huh. why. Why, Gregory? Everything that the U.S. has done since 9-11 has had the effect of increasing that's extremism. I, I, I disagree United with States. that. I disagree with I disagree that. I disagree with One that. One thing is, you know, Exhibit A is not much has happened since. Right? Not here. Yeah. You know, we yeah. what we did we we decreased terrorism here. Big time here. We a yeah. took the war to the people over there yeah. where it's far safer right. for us for right. them to fight it. Right. And B, we shored up our own security. Right. It's you know there was oh. some sloppy. There's some stuff in there you don't like. I don't like. Right. He doesn't like. Oh. Okay, but you know we are a lot more secure than we were on nine ten. You know, but now and Western Europe. Has a major mess. Yeah, but they, yeah, they a were major not. Mess. They need to go through that period of vigilance. vigilance. That's what I'm right, saying. Right. You well, have to go through a period where you clean the pipes, pipes. and you say, right. "What should we be watching, and how should we be watching, right. and whatever it costs, we, let's start paying it right now." Right. You know, and right. sort it out. And Do, now yeah. they, now they, Do it now instead of will later. slash yeah, could, because you know? hopefully yeah. something yeah. that we could all agree on is because. the solution is not what we've been doing uh. because that's been demonstrably uh. by CIA internal record uh. increasing the backlash against the United States and increasing uh. the anti-American sentiment, anti-Western uh. sentiment. Well, Western Europe is now more proactive. I mean, look what happened on Thursday. You know, the the, the raids that, that were conducted in Belgium. And um, uh, uh, the terrorists were um, captured and, and killed, and there were raids also conducted in France and Germany. And um, Western Europe, you know, I notice now is taking a more proactive uh, stance on this. Mm -hmm. Our audience, so you can submit your questions to our guests through our website, www.publicsquare.net, and we'll answer as many as we can live on air toward the end of the program. Moving on, over the last several weeks, the terrorist group. Boko Haram has conducted multiple attacks in Nigeria. It raided a Nigerian town earlier this month, killing as many as 2,000 people. A few days later, a child suicide bomber attacked a marketplace, killing more than a dozen. Nonetheless, since the Bring Back Our Girls campaign last year, Boko Haram has gotten very little attention <coughs> from American media. Mr. Clay, why do you think that is? Well, Boko Haram, well, there's a couple things going on in terms of coverage. One, the situation in Paris was unique. Why? Because it had something that is dramatic, and you could see it. And what is that? The video. The video. That, that's one of the reasons that the, the situation in Paris was covered um, so intensively. You could see it, and CNN and MSNBC and Fox News Channel could play it over and over and over again. Video sells. I think it's a Video stretch. is drama. You know, why do you think, like, when, when the, situ um, uh, the uh, ruling came down in Ferguson on November 24th and the rioting and the looting and all that, dramatic video, cable news which drives the news cycle, well, here's the, love the, that video. Here's one. And you don't have the video and uh, with the Boko Haram. That one. You know, video was huge in that case. No. Two guys dressed up like ninjas. Right. Shooting, but that's not even true. It makes a difference that you know, like Garner was on film and and uh, Michael, help me here. Ferguson, that one was not on Michael film. Brown. Michael, Michael Brown, Brown was not on film. All kind of dispute yeah. about what actually happened. Yeah. Garner was on film. Yeah. We know exactly right. what happened. Yeah. All right, but, yeah. but the riots the whole and all that argument. were but, on yeah. video. But I think I agree. I, agree. I don't this, think that this is. Look, that, this, this, this was a hundred. Times as many people, right. up to a hundred yeah, times. Like two thousand people I think you're were gonna, killed. I and think villages talk, were burned. To, to talk about the fact that there, there's like no yeah. audio, video evidence, and yeah. that explains the difference in the Western media. Well, there's a couple I things. I think that's a fabrication. But, but it's one of them. The video is no, one no, of the things. No, no. But the second thing is. Um, I think because his views are black on black, but crime. that's not even true you because know? there is video yeah. and there is satellite. There, there's yeah. even satellite imagery, yeah. okay? Because this this attack was so massive. Uh -huh. All right, so there's there's plenty of evidence. That's not the explanation. 
The real explanation, okay, as I see it, is that media has become tremendously concentrated in this country over the past 30 years. Since 1982, in 1982, it was 50 companies that controlled uh, a 90% share of the media, okay? okay? That would be the newspapers, okay. television, radio. You blame on monopoly okay, of the media. Hold on, uh -huh. okay? So now it's six. It's six mm. companies that control 90% uh -huh. of what we hear, uh -huh. read, okay, uh -huh. uh, and watch, as news, uh -huh. all right? And those uh -huh. companies, these are media empires, all uh -huh. right? So MSNBC, for example, all right, to take the, the left end of the American spectrum, uh -huh. all right, is owned by GE. Right. GE also produces bombs, okay, uh -huh. military aircraft for the DOD. That gives them another incentive. Uh -huh. They're not impartial. We have this fraud media structure oh, 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 in the oh, oh, United States oh, 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 I thought, where I thought those ABC people was who are reporting, those people who are reporting, uh -huh. okay, are also have other kinds of incentives. You yeah. know, they have their own interests in the yeah. United States. Uh -huh. Well, this, I think part of it is, uh, I think you, part of your point I buy it to is that something suddenly happened in, in Paris. Right. Right with right. Boko Haram is that's a long, right. over many months, many years Monsieur, story. Right, right. This is like one day, bam, bam which right. does you know, and also Paris is an international media center. center exactly. uh, you know the yeah. Chad Nigeria Major border is right. not. Yeah. You know, right. so, I mean, there's just no Boko one Haram there covered is in stuff, Africa. and no one yeah. and no one. Right, that's right. Where yeah. it is, right. it's in a remote part remote of area. Africa. Right. Uh, very hard to get, get to, to. Then you would right. need to be sherped right. and protected, right. and you know at great expense. So I right. mean, at some point, some news organization is going right. to say, you know, we're going to go do it. We're right. we're the ones who go tell these uh, stories. Yeah. But you know, Africa it's a very get, hard. Thing Africa to cover. does not as a con Africa does not get the pub the way the other continents right. do. It's true. And, and like Nichols said, why Paris? Well, part of that, as I said earlier, it has to do uh, is that I think it's viewed as black on black crime. Well, it's just like the United States. It's, 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 it's like something United along States. those lines. Black yeah. on black crime does not get the same pub as white on black crime or black okay. on white crime. Go back it's, to it's the true. record. We're a lot closer and to France than we are to Africa. That's true. Back yeah. We have a lot more people Africa, and culturally. Right. Africa is almost like the forgotten yeah. continent. Go back to the record you know. since the beginning of 9 11. All right. Let's, you want to yes. tally up lives, okay? Or because unless your argument is that the American lives or French lives, okay, or uh, uh, Belgian lives are worth more uh, than Middle Eastern or Nigerian lives, that's not right, the argument. Then yeah. you have a million people died in Iraq. All right, there's uh -huh. still uh, the radioactivity there is reported by the European Commission on Radioactivity as higher than is ever seen. You know, and including on these, uh, the Bikini Atoll tests and these specific nuclear tests, that's to get producing cancer rates, mm -hmm. which are much higher. You know, that stuff is even blocked out from our media, somewhere. okay? Yeah. And it's the same thing. Tens of thousands of deaths, all right, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The same thing in Libya, all right? Same stories in Su Syria, in Sudan, in Somalia, all right? So unless you're arguing that uh, Western lives are worth more somehow, mm -hmm. I think that's untenable. But it's not the, it's not a value of the lives. It's like mm -hmm. its newsworthiness is dependent on proximity, location, commonality location, location with the people. A lot of it is and location, have more, location, we'll, 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 it's, Yeah, it's where it is. Yeah. Commonality with the people involved. Yes, uh, that's the point. The, the, because yeah. it makes it right. makes you think you're vulnerable. Location, you know, I'm vulnerable location. to this. Right. What's going on, Boko Haram, right. does not make me in Washington D.C. No more vulnerable. Yeah. But it's yeah, Africa. I mean, yeah. but Paris, yeah, right. that These could be remote areas of Africa, you know, people, you know I mean, and when you, when you think of Paris, Nigeria, when you see something happening in Paris, the first thing you're going to say, oh, New York. Nigeria you is know, the biggest GDP you know. in Africa. It's a remote area of, uh, of Africa. Okay. But, 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 yeah, but, but the course, border with Chad happening in these remote villages. Where this is villages. going on, yeah. who do you think wrote, published more about Ferguson? The media in France or the media in Nigeria? I think... It was probably the French media. French media, right. Exactly. Right, exactly. Because yeah. for the same reason. Right. The point is... Plus a more cosmopolitan area. It's just the way how we should area. accept. You know, so uh, to say, not, oh, well, that's yeah, just the way it operates. It's not, yeah. it's, it's not, there's not, it's nothing to well, accept. That's, that's, that's not, not as he says, it's a media why center. you Paris cover things. That's not how you decide to cover All right, gentlemen. Let's move on to our final topic. Last week, President Obama announced a plan to make community colleges free for all students. Now, while the announcement lacked details, such as how it would be paid for, it has reignited discussion about higher education and its ever-increasing cost. Nick Brana, is the president's idea a good one? 
Yeah, it is. It's a fantastic one. Um, he's proposing two years of free community college for everyone. I think that's a terrific idea, just like I think uh, free pre-K was a terrific idea the year before. Does they stand a chance, you know, in a Republican-dominated, controlled Congress now? No. But, you know, to give some perspective here, many European countries offer virtually free higher education, okay? So did the United States back in the 1950s, all right? This kind of idea is, like, unimaginable now. Uh, but over the past 40 years, the cost of higher education has skyrocketed, uh, making it increasingly unaffordable and also trapping students in this kind of cycle of debt, this vicious cycle that keeps them paying it simply to student loan obligations, both to the government, to, pro to gigantic mega banks, trillion dollar banks, and it prevents them from spending that money in the economy elsewhere, buying a car, uh, buying their own apartment, uh, consuming more. You know, so instead of, it's like an anchor now. Student debt is an anchor on the economy. And now that amount totals, uh, as, as of 2013, uh, in the fall, it passed the amount of aggregate auto loan debt and credit card loan debt. Right. It now stands at $1.2 right. trillion dollars student loan. of student loan debt. Yeah. You know, so this is a problem that is really gets to our values. You know, if if uh, what we're being told now, what our government expects us to believe, both parties, is that we can finance trillion dollar endless self-perpetuating wars, trillion multi-trillion dollar bailouts of banks, multi-trillion dollar on uh, legalized corporate tax evasion, but we can't spend the tiny fraction that it would take to provide higher education and actually make the American dream accessible to our own children. You know, I really think we need to sit down and re-examine those priorities. I think there could be a bigger situation going on here. This could be all political. You know, this could be President Obama trying to help out the Democrats for 2016. Think about it, you know. Check out the scenario, you know. As you said in your um, uh, monologue, uh, your solilo soliloquy, um, the all Republican yes, Senate, Senate and House will, will veto it. Okay, President, as you say, President Obama knows that. So what he could, so what's the deal here? President well, Obama right. could well, be boxing the Republicans in in 2016 and have them portrayed as what? Anti-education. Okay. That's, it could be uh, all about politics. Box the Republicans in for 2016 when Hillary runs. You know, yeah. the Democrats well, the can thing. easily paint the Republicans I as anti-education. Yeah. Here, we here, agree for once. Here's the thing. All uh, these years. I don't think they're... I don't believe it's it. It's a $60 billion dollar uh, a year proposal. Yeah. So it's not cheap. Right. Um, uh, of which, at least the outline is 75% federal, 25%. States. states, which are already underwater, sure. and have these pension obligations till the end of the moon. Um, uh, it's not a role for the federal government. Um, I, I think you will join me, if we, you know, at, for ending the student loan problem. Student debt problem is to end student loans. Mm -hmm. Quit lending all this money because when you lend all this money, mm -hmm. then the price can be higher uh, because right. people have access to money to pay for it. Well, then so how do you want to? You want to throw the? You want to? drop the bottom out of the price of college, yeah. and you want to make things like community college right. affordable but to how people, do, how, how do pay for quit, them? well, because... There's some loans. Gregory, they can't keep charging the same thing if no one's buying it. So George Washington University would have to cut its fees tremendously if on the heels of that? Yeah. I don't, I mean, you think it's, it's, you know, Is it's worth true? giving them $50,000 a year? The and putting some guy $40,000 a year compounded forever in debt? You know, I don't know. I don't think so. But, I think that I think the thing is, as long as you're pumping money into the education system, uh, the federal government is putting all this money in the education system. You're going to keep running up loan costs. You're right. you're pushing that on oh, to no, no, right. these people who cannot. You know, there's only two things you cannot bankrupt out of: mm. taxes and student loans. Right. You know, you got to eat it all the way till it's paid. Hey. And you're crushing these people with a thing, and you could kill all these birds with one stone, uh, just quit lending people money, money. for college. So There's no right. private, uh, private uh, market will emerge, or it won't. But it uh, probably will, right? So the, they never force colleges to lower all of their tuition fees yeah. and everything. You can't they would automatically on. force them to no lower everything. No one signs up for 50, you go down uh, to 40, right? Uh, Microeconomics uh, 101, okay? When a company determines its own production, all right, it, it has supply and a demand curve. It determines where those optimally meet. 
so that it can produce at the highest marginal value. All right? That means that if you did essentially what you're suggesting, all right, that there would be everybody below that curve who could not afford it. All right? If you essentially privatize education in that fashion, everybody below that curve, there would be a whole segment of the population that simply would be permanently cut out of education. That's not my vision of the United States. That's not my vision of permanently of cut out. There's no one, no market is going to come up and say, "Hey, there's here are thousands it's of people who want to go to college." It's right. Going it's going to make the price so come down. So many people can't afford because it's going to right. calculate so that, that there's a certain amount of percentage down. of people who can afford to pay a greater amount than that. Therefore, the object is to find this optimal production point, That's, okay? which, the, which is going to be a lot higher as long as you pile in government money, money into it. I mean, you it's take out the government money, yeah. those points meet at a different place, uh, like they used to before you put in all this government money. So, yeah, your argument is... No, there was more assistance in right. the past, yeah, your, like your, I said, in the 50s. Yeah. Your argument is simply this. As long as all these students all around the country are willing to keep taking out these student loans and expensive loans and rates and all cost, that, it'll never colleges end. have no incentive to lower any of their prices. That's, that's right. essentially that's your right. argument, right? That's right. Right. So if you take away all these student loans, then finally colleges will be forced yeah. to reduce their yeah. tuition and fees. Applications are down 60% one year. The right. next year, right. you will see a different uh -huh. landscape right. in college buying. Right. They, they, you know, they don't have you'll have more people matching right. things like right. you know, community and urban schools right. that really serve what they need where right. you can still work and where... Right. You know, you're not living in a dorm for four years. Maybe that's not. Uh, you know, I don't think we need. We owe every kid in America to live in a dorm four years. You uh, know, uh, that's up to you. We give you high school. We don't give you college. Uh, and I don't think we. I don't think you know one trillion dollars well, in debt. We should have a good time. That actually, segues. Trillion. What's, what's going to happen to us when the rest of the world does though? Uh, when Western Europe does, and when Japan does, okay, and when Hong Kong. Does. I don't think we're going to fall behind. Hey, Europe, you go to school for free. Technology right? is far ahead as we are now. Yeah. Moving on to uh, questions from our viewers. Uh, one of the questions is about this topic. Uh, if we make community college free, then won't demand for it increase, which would mean more schools, which would make it basically an extension of high school? That's basically the, the, the uh, junior college in my hometown. If you look it up in the phone book, they call it the 13th and 14th grade of the high school that's across the street. That's essentially what, you I know, like the, that. the big one of the issues here is yeah. um, one of the reasons the impetus is for the president to have done this is mm -hmm. that p there's so many people who graduate from high school not prepared to do real college work. Right, right. So it's like we, we, will, we will catch you up for right, free. Right. So really you're just saying what we didn't get done in 12 will now pay to do in 14 mm -hmm. and I'm saying no, do it in 12. Mm, interesting. Well I don't, you're framing this as it's either we have an adequate high school education or a a uh, access to higher education, and that, that's simply not the question in my mind. Like I say, we're burning trillions of dollars in these things, which oh, produce things. negative return right. on investment for the public. Trillions of like dollars wars. of waste. So it, it's just no, a drop in the bucket. It's a uh, drop in the bucket compared to that kind of thing. Uh, not a negative thing. Uh, Our second question is about the Islamic terrorism and. It asks, if, if Islamic extremism is to be marginalized, doesn't that movement have to happen within Islam itself? Outsiders telling them what to do won't do any good. We'll yeah, and outsiders bombing them certainly isn't going to oh, help. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. I saw a fabulous uh, painting by an ind oh. independent artist. Great. Uh, it was an image of a drone dropping uh, little miniaturine uh, images, uh, figurines of the Empire State Building. You know, and th and that's just quintessential of what we try to do. You call you know, it arrogance, boom, democracy by force. Is that you arrogance? Know, that kind of thing. That's arrogance. Right? It's a form of arrogance. That's mm. part of it. Oh, but much more important than that is mm. simply the moneyed interest that goes into this. Uh -huh. Okay, some wars are not meant to be won, and this is mm. one of them because no. the business, the war is the business. Mm -hmm. The war provides the pretext and no. the justification for a gigantic transfer of wealth, right. public dollars, mm -hmm. to these military-industrial corpora corporations. Military-industrial complex. Well, at least it's something that the Constitution says the uh, government is supposed to do. Must as defend the American to people. people's tuition for uh, community college. Must defend the American people. <laughs> it's time for our most underreported underreported story of the week. We'll start with Mr. McNichol. Um, Your most underreported story of the uh, week. Most under is a sad story. Uh, my friend Earl Kelly, who was a reporter for a variety of newspapers around Maryland, uh, 
died yesterday, the day before Wednesday, I believe, of a heart attack. If you knew him, no explanation was necessary. If you didn't know him, no explanation was possible. Um, just a quintessential newsroom, suspenders, tie, unloosened yeah. one button, yeah. hilarious stories guy. I will tell Cigarettes, one quick coffee. one. We were, yeah, we were mm. driving about cigarettes. He, we mm. were driving to a baseball game one night, and he's telling me, he said, yeah, I used to smoke. So said, I quit. I went to the doctor on a Friday, and he yeah. said, I smoke four packs a day. He said, if you don't quit today, you're uh-huh. going to have a heart attack. Yeah. He goes, so I, I did it. You know, Monday I had the heart attack anyway. Yeah. So I spent the next <laughs> five days saying I missed out on 12 packs. Yeah, <laughs> so, so one way to look at it. But, uh, yeah, a good guy, a terrific storyteller, and, oh, and I will miss him. And journalists all over Maryland are mourning him today. Uh-huh. Greg, your turn. The Academy Awards are coming up. Um, the Reverend Al Sharpton announced, uh, uh, what, Wednesday or Thursday, that uh, he's going to call uh, an emergency, quote-unquote emergency meeting. Uh, he has to meet with Hollywood because there were no black folk um, involved as nominees for any of the movies uh, for Academy Awards. And um, he is very concerned about the diversity in Hollywood. Uh, apparently... This is the second time that this situation has occurred since the year 2000, where there are no black actors, actresses um, as nominees. And um, I have, I'm a bit ambivalent because it's who? Reverend Al, one of the roving reverends of recompense. Um, one is Al, one is uh, Jesse Jackson, of course. And I'll, I always wonder about his motives. Is Reverend Al being sincere? You know, it's, it's good in a, uh, on one level to ask Hollywood why there are no black actors and actresses involved in uh, nominees for the awards. On the other level, you always have to ask yourself about that phrase, ulterior motives. Is he going to do what they call the Reverend Al shakedown of Hollywood? In other words, uh, you know, because you know his track record is to go in, um, blast corporate America, blast some major corporation, and essentially commit extortion. Say, look, if you don't give me some bread, I'm going to raise holy hell. If you give me my bread, then I'll leave you alone. Um, you know that's uh, been the reported mo right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um, if he just quietly goes away, then one can infer key word in the phrase, infer that hot somebody in Hollywood gave him some bread to go away. Uh, but if we see some changes or whatever, um, then um, and it, that would be very interesting. All right, Mr. Brana, you have the last word and the last underreported topic of the week. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the big picture in the so-called war on terror. <laughs> Something a little more serious. Mm. Uh, a recently leaked <laughs> top secret uh, CIA study shows that the agency knows that drones uh, are counterproductive in the war on terror. And they said this, in fact, to Obama in 2009. Drones massacre civilians and generate more religious extremism than they are extinguishing. Uh, Knowing this, Obama naturally made drones a centerpiece of his anti-terror strategy. Uh, Bush used to torture terror suspects. Obama just murders them with drones, uh, along with anybody else in the vicinity. (laughs) Uh, So, in fact, everything that the U.S. does in the Middle East increases Islamic fundamentalism. Uh, ISIS only exists because we destabilized Iraq, we debathified the country, and installed a Shiite government that systematically persecutes the Sunnis in the country, the Sunni majority. We instigated a sectarian civil war that's now engulfing the Middle East. Uh, We turned Libya into a failed state run by warlords. We turned Afghanistan into a narco state. Uh, That produces 90% of the world's heroin today. Uh, The Pentagon ran programs in Iraq and Afghanistan trying to buy off the loyalty of sectarian militias. General Petraeus paid more than $400 million to the same jihadis that were killing American soldiers. As the New York Times reports, there are no moderate rebels in Syria, and the Free Syrian Army is a unified fighting force. As a unified fighting force is a myth. It doesn't exist. Uh, Yet since 2006, we've been pumping the United States and NATO pumping weapons and cash into Syria that keep up ending in ISIS and Al-Qaeda's hands. Rather than halting the arms trade, both administrations expanded them. 
including the Obama administration mm. now. The big picture is this. For ages, governments have invented myths to disguise imperialism. The British had a civilizing mission in India. Uh, Imperial Japan was creating a pan-Asian paradise on Earth. Uh, the Nazis were protecting oppressed ethnic Germans across Europe. Uh, and now the United States is promoting democracy and defending its national security with an endless series of preemptive wars. Hmm. To compare when, us to the Nazis? When Noam Chomsky was asked, That's what it sounds like. how do we stop yeah. terrorism, it sounds like. he replied, stop participating in it. Mm. Said throughout on that the optimistic ages. note, that is going to do it for us this week on the public square. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.